talking. <laughs> I know, it is so hard to stop talking. <laughs> I'm with you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, welcome this morning. And it's really good to see you this morning. I so look forward to being here. I so look forward to community. And I'm so glad for, for, I'm so glad for all of you who are watching online. And you really need to be here in person because it is just so awesome to be here in person. And yeah, so we have a very special singer this morning, a Kathleen Walter, who many of you know. Yeah, she used to be the choir director here. So way back, not too long ago. <laughs> so yeah. And so let us see if there's any announcements today. I think Reverend Moore is speaking next week. Yes. Uh, yes, indeed. And um, just want to invite you to come afterwards. Uh, we always do. We have a full house downstairs after the service where we get to chat and visit. And, and that's just one of the awesome parts about meeting together in person. So, and also there's a rummage sale going to happen. So, it's not going to happen? Yeah. The date is not confirmed for the 13th because we already have a rental for the 13th. So, I was talking to Kathy and maybe the week before, maybe the week after. So, <laughs> so so save save your save your items and uh, it's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> Just grab a box or two and fill them up. So, yeah. So our new practitioner is here today. Yes. Cheryl, do you want to, to stand? Yes. <laughs> So we want to welcome you. We are so happy. And this center is so blessed with uh, practitioners. And Cheryl just moved here from the desert. So, yeah. <laughs> and we are, we are, you're going to say something. Okay. Cheryl has contacted us, and uh, we've arranged to transfer her practitioner's license from Palm Desert, where she was a practitioner there, to our center. And she's going to kind of just come for a while, and then at, toward the end of the month, she'll start taking a more active role here. But we're just so pleased to have her join us and bring her bright, sunny personality to us. Thank you, Cheryl, for choosing our center. Her name is Cheryl Guest. Let's give her another hand. Uh -huh. and for those of you who are new to this, uh, a teaching to New Center for Spiritual Living, Religious Science. Practitioners take a minimum of four years of study. It's not just I want to, to do something. It's really a serious commitment to healing prayer, to be with you, and to know how to get a consciousness in alignment for healing. And practitioners are powerful. So I invite you to take advantage of the practitioners here to put a request in for prayer. Uh, there's a box out there. We are a, a tradition based in prayer because prayer works. Prayer transforms lives when we get in alignment with that power and know the truth because as we believe, so it is. And practitioners are trained to know for you that you are one, you are whole, you are holy. And yeah, so is there a practitioner downstairs? We have a room downstairs, uh, just past the Sunday school room. If after the service you uh, choose to uh, visit with a practitioner, if you need someone to sit with you. OK, is there anyone here for the first time today? All right. Welcome. And she has a beautiful little daughter, Hazel, who is an artist. So really 
creating some wonderful creations there. So welcome, everyone. And, and Kathleen is going to uh, grace us with her music this morning. So welcome. Oh, no, it's Dawn. We had a we've had a change in service, so don't don't think I'm just like totally this way. Um, yeah, before the message, we'll have Kathleen. Congregational We're song, that's you, Don. Let's do a song, congregation song, and I'll yeah. try to lead it. I'll start us yeah, off. so sorry to frighten you, Kathleen. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so Don is absolutely wonderful and fabulous on the guitar. And be sure to tell him that because I have a hard time talking men to doing things. Oh, she bugs me all the time. <laughs> <laughs> In your program, there's uh, the words, Lord, make me a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. With thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. And we're going to sing that right now. See if we can, I can get it in tune here with the guitar. Oh, yeah. You can sing right along with me. We'll do it like a couple, three times. Yeah, let's stand up and just get oh, grace that's better, the rest yeah. of this song. This is such a powerful yeah. song. Oh, yeah. Let me see if I can get this in tune here. Oh. No. All right, there we go. Everything sounds good now. <laughs> okay. Well, now, Lord, make me a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. With thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Do it again. Lord, make me sanctuary, pure and holy, right and true. With thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary. Sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. With thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Yes, we got it there. I think that's fine. Let's go do it again. Is that okay? Amen. And so as we've sang the words to those songs, being a sanctuary for the spirit that's within us. Um, very holy song. I invite you to really embrace those words. And now as we are, can be centered in prayer with practitioner Ruth. Someone even shorter than I needed to stand here. So if we can come together... Open our hearts to know that there is one God. That God is all over the world. That God is in every person, everything, everywhere. And I know that as we realize the God within, within us, is within all. And I know that as we think today of all the different things that have that the people will say, take you take them to your heart and love them. And I give great thanksgiving for my being able to be here today, for all the people who have come today, and all the people who are uh, listening visually or um, just um, audibly. And I give thanks for all this. And I open my words to the law of love, knowing that the law always says yes. And join me in saying, and so it is. 
Now, if you'll look into your program here, you'll notice that it says affirmation. I'd like you to join me in saying it. I am grateful to see my individual expression of the divine expanded through my unity with all life. Together, we do amazing things, and God smiles, and so it is. Uh, do to many different things, which I won't even tell you about. I am going to be the reader today. If I can turn the light on, I might see the words. Uh, first, there's a quote from Ram Dass, very interesting. If you think you're enlightened, go spend a week with your family. <laughs> I laughed at that, too, until this morning. Just accept, then, that no matter what your experience may have been until now, the truth about you is that while you were born of human parentage, the real you that came through this human parentage is an original creature, wonderful being. You are God's beloved child. That's by Ernest Holmes from Help for Today. I haven't found that book. I really need it. It's on page 143 and a half. And now the content for today. Some of us were born into loving families, while others were born into families lacking nutritional, nutritioning capacity. Some were born into families somewhere in between. Others have never known their family of origin. Whether our biological family is an occurrence of chance or a choice we made at the soul level, we get who we get. We get their gentle material, and if they care for us, we get the experience of their worldviews and temperaments. Whatever our circumstances, we do well to remember that we are of divine origin and unique gifts. As Ernest Holmes says, above all, the real you is filled with the potential awaiting realization. Sometimes we are well into our lives before we understand this. Hmm. For some, our family of origin assisted us along our path to realization. For others, this was not so. But if you are reading this now, you have found a path to realization of your authentic self the real you. As adults of God, we are accountable for our thoughts, feelings, and actions. We all have to do the work of releasing limiting beliefs and adding thoughts of greater possibility, wisdom, love, thereby making a better future. If you had the advantage of a loving home, be grateful and continue to grow from where you are. If you did not, then your path is one of forgiveness, gratitude, and continued growth from where you are. None of us are denied the possibility of continued growth. I, I have to say it, sorry. I am a, an example of this. I did not become a practitioner or could take the courses until after I was 80 years old. You can do it too. The affirmation for today, I am grateful to be alive and to be aware that I am now my own parent. I build my sense of self-love with every thought. I forgive anything in my past that led to seem to me led me to see myself in a limited way. You are not limited. You are just working on it. Mm.
<laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Ruth. Ruth is one of my role models, by the way. Yes. <laughs> She's just totally amazing. You need to get to know her if you don't. So I invite Kathleen to uh, grace us this morning. I'm really looking forward to, to hearing you. Good morning. <laughs> I see some of my old choir members out there. Good to see you. Um, the words to this song come from Psalm 91. I don't know if you've ever read Psalm 91, but it's really a psalm of great comfort and assurance. So that's uh, where this comes from. Oh, 
Thank you. Here before, so we, I knew what we were in for when she was going to sing, so thanks again. So we just say good morning, do we not? Good morning. Good morning. Yes, sounds good. Let me see what the magic, the magic uh, papers have to say for me this morning. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> I was thinking, oh gosh, I just brushed an ant off just now. Hit the floor. Well, the um, there's an old comedian, you know, that uh, people of my generation can remember. George Burns, and you've probably never heard of him. Yeah, George Burns. Oh, okay. Yeah, George Burns, right. Well, he says that uh, he was asked what makes a good sermon. And uh, it's something, the, the advice he gave is not really taken by most of we ministers. But here's what he said. He said a good sermon is to have a good beginning and a good ending, then have the two as close together as possible. <laughs> so, I don't know if that'll work today or not, but we'll see. So I'm glad you could be here today. Doggone, I'm so glad you could have been somewhere else. You know that. But uh, you decided to come out here and check out Woodland Chapel this morning. You know, uh, just for your information, just the FYI part of this, among the ministers here at the center, Reverend Moore, our senior minister, Reverend Julie, myself, you know, we have an ongoing topic of conversation. And uh, in this topic, uh, we're always wondering. Yeah, we're always wondering about how to better serve all of you. That's why we're here, is to serve you. <laughs> no other reason. I mean, I could sleep in on Sunday morning. But I want to come down and serve you. And uh, over the years, we put out efforts to bring music to our services that could be adding to these spiritual experiences we're looking for when we come and look for a spiritual experience. And we've tried to bring a variety of, uh, that we've had of some wonderful musicians, as you know. Um, today is a good example. And many of you have shown your appreciation. We appreciate that. But I tell you this, because for various different reasons, we have two of our regular teams of music uh, people gone for the summer doing different things. So we're having some experimental play and fun to keep our musical balance moving along this morning, like uh, earlier this morning. So now, now we're in the process of interviewing other musicians. Reverend Julie is really working hard at that uh, to fill the gaps. And if you know of anyone who does play music, why, you know, let us know. We'll, we would like to uh, talk to them. But uh, we're going to do everything. We're going to continue our determinations to hold a sacred space to be filled by music for your quality, spiritual morning experience on Sunday mornings here. So just want you to know that. And speaking of quality for our living experiences, you know, most of the reasons we bring a message of the morning to, to this place every morning is for your consideration to see if it contains our efforts to bring you enough interesting information that uh, can contribute to the quality of your living the rest of the week. Because you've got a whole week going, Sunday morning. Sunday isn't your only day, we know that. And we ministers are in constant wondering and discussion regarding the ongoing topics that we've been coming up with. Uh, uh, actually, they come from the mothership, I like to call it, the mother. SHIP is the Center of Spiritual Living, the home center back in Colorado. And they do their best to really work on getting, giving us things that we can look at and see if we can organize things and give you a message of that morning for the subject. So this topic today, as you can read in the program there, is uh, one not too hard to figure out. It says, you and I are we. And uh, is there anything uh, fantastically odd about that or different? I mean, gee whiz, you and I are we. Me and you are us. You know, we know all that. Figure that out. But before I'm going to jump into that, 
I remember a class several years ago when I was studying to become a minister. The subject came up for discussion about the direction and the purpose of our spiritual teaching, the science of mind, religious science. You see, one of the anchor affirmative statements we, that I was introduced to back then when beginning with studies, that would keep coming up as years go by, keep coming up to remind us how we begin to learn affirmative patterns of our behavior for our life. That's what we live by, you know, is our patterns of behavior, if you haven't figured that out. Most of us have heard this so many times here that come, if you come regularly, it's like, change your thinking, change your life, change our thinking, change our life. It's a trant almost. Well, it was presented as the instructor stated that most of the reasons of study behind our spiritual teaching of religious science actually starts with change. You know, the conversation went on to explore uh, why people do seek out a church experience in the first place. Why do you to go to church? Different churches all around. It was suggested that maybe perhaps the folks coming to a church may be looking for a community, you know, other folks, a spiritual family, that kind of thing, okay? And others come with issues, issues, many of them deep-rooted issues with mental, emotional stirrings, needs, and wonderings, hopes that there may be a better way to navigate their lives. Yeah. So, you see, I think some folks are looking for maybe a more theological structure than what we offer here. Uh, candles and ritual. We have candles, of course, and we have all kinds of things that we use. Um, but do's and don'ts to follow some real strict that way and that way, our way or the highway, you know, that type of thing. I've explored that. <laughs> and what folks are going to find with us in our New Thought traditions, uh, we're not going to tell you. We're not going to tell those who come to be with us what to eat or how to do it or why you do it, or here's when you do it. We don't offer a salvation path, even. Yeah, that's, that's sometimes strange to, to, to some folks who just show up for the first time, because we don't believe there's a need for salvation. We don't believe that you're born in sin. We can't imagine that you came into the world as a lost soul or a sinner that needs some intervention. Uh, because we don't believe that, uh, we don't believe in a protective cover. We don't offer a protective cover from a bi diabolical enemy. It's always talking about the enemy. We don't do that because the science of mind approach holds a belief that the only diabolical enemy in a, is, is, is found conjuring found in, in a morbid, fearful imagination of the human mind. It doesn't exist in the universe in any other form. When we say change our thinking, change our life, and, if we, and then if we follow that suggestion, you know, sincerely, we find that doors and windows begin to just kind of open up for us. It's just odd how that is. To change for good starts to open a little wider for improvement of our human experiences. And isn't that what we all are trying to do? Have some good in our human experiences. See, our classes here uh, that we teach hold uh, good information and practices that uh, are based on spiritual principles. Now, how do we know what's a spiritual principle? Sometimes this is the first time someone's ever heard the word spiritual principle. And how does it work? Well, well, a major principle, I'll just tell you this, a major principle, which we can also call a, major, a, a truth, works for us by working through us as us in direct degrees, all according to what we believe and how much we will hold to that belief. And we believe it can work for everyone. <laughs> Nobody, you don't have to be special, but it may be that it's not gonna work for everyone who will not work it. So our beliefs start with what we think and what we feel spilling over into what we do, that's our actions in life. That becomes the fruits, what we harvest of our spiritual principles creating a belief that there is one power, one power, yeah, that moves through all life, yes, and it shows, it moves through my life, your life, right now, 
right here in this very room. And all the humans use that power. We all use it. Everybody uses it consciously, on purpose, with purpose and direction, or unconsciously. We're using that power. The human experience of using power is governed by what we believe about that power. We should ask ourselves much of the time, what do I believe about God? The G-O-D, the grand overall designer. That's, of course, my own perspective coming into play now. You see, the human experience being gov governed by what we believe about power, we can then just bring it into our teaching. We say that there's just this one power. We comment about it all the time. That, but there's many, many uses of the one quality of this quality of, of using this inexhaustible energy. Energy can never be exhausted. It just moves on to another form. It's pulled by attraction. All those things are, are, are what our sciences are coming to, physical sciences are understanding. Uh, so power moves and energy inhabits and form exists in many expressions to be the conduits of energy. Oh my gosh, you know, this is just like 101. Exercising power all the time, using the power. Now, we also, um, from the beginning of our roots of growing into New Thought teaching as we get into it, we have long studied how to individualize our experiences, and then we focus on raising our consciousness, we call it, uh, into the oneness of the major conscious, the one consciousness, the one power, the one source that most of us call God. And for years, our focus has been on the consciousness only, just working on ourselves individually to the betterment of our own life, thinking and, and, and changing our thinking, changing our life, believing this and believing that, that our major, believing that our major spiritual calling is to gain self-mastery. Nothing wrong with that. But you know, many gurus and dynamic spiritual personalities have grown out of such individualized focus. Uh, Billy Graham, Joel Osteen, some churches or spiritual organizations, the charismatic personality just blossoms and draws the multitudes. We can find that in the mega churches in many parts of this country. We don't find it here. We have three ministers who give you their hearts. And see, this isn't all bad, being involved with being attracted to a certain individual, or whatever it may be, or an organization. But every organization needs strong leadership. It needs quality leadership. And that's what, we, that's what we always try to implement here. I see Reverend Moore come down here. He's Saturday mornings he's down here sometimes, getting caught up on stuff. It's not just part-time ministering. It's a full-time devotion. However, here's a, here's, here's a, here's a slider on this. It's proven out over time that a spiritual relationship that embraces and includes many hearts and minds that may have strong individual expressions of human preferences, of course, but all of that them we willing to unite in a common spiritual purpose and give of our time, talent, and treasure. You see, what happens is a great principle that has been called the law of attraction adds its power to the manifestation of things and becomes a workable experience that's shared by many rather than the individual focus. And in the overall picture of human need and human desire, this great valuable and common purpose to create circumstances for a world that does work for all. Dag nabbit, that's what we've been talking about for how long? Creating circumstances in order to a world that works for everyone can blossom. We, never give, we will never give up on that because we know that's the ultimate goal, the ultimate God goal. It's got to be. Do you think God thinks any more of me or, or uh, anyone else than the other person? How can that be when universal love is what we're talking about? You see... Um, in the overall picture of human need, 
and the human desire, that great, valuable, and common purpose to create those circumstances for that world that will work for everybody becomes a reality, and that oversees more than just for self-focused achievement. Get ahead in the world. That's okay. To work for a goal of prosperity and abundance of good for all in our corner of the world was, I tell you, it'll bring us greater satisfaction and more outright doggone slam down outright joy than going to the mountaintop and secluding. I've been there. Go to the mountaintop, yeah. Seclude ourselves with in, until enlightenment comes. Hit all the... Yeah, never mind. Yeah, hit them all. Hit them all. You see, if progressive spiritual living was only about what we do individually in this teaching or any other, and if, if we... We just, just all just go within to our individual kingdom of spirit. I love to say this, let's go within when I start the prayer. Meditate. Or going on a long retreat for peace and enlightenment. We're still going to miss an important part of our journey to build spiritual community. It's not just about anchoring ourselves in self-esteem or spending our spiritual coin to make ourselves holy and perfect and thinking that we will make a better world by always focusing on our spiritual development. Change me then, the world changes. Yes, okay, 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 but slow down. Through experimenting with all these different spiritual practices, and there's a lot of them. You know, the Buddha did that. What did he find? The Buddha, before he became the Buddha, Gautama, before he became the Buddha, he punished his body. He went through all kinds of religious experiential experiments before he realized that his Buddha nature was waiting for his recognition and became aware of the importance of connecting with his fellow man and creating a spiritual community to populate a world with other Buddha awakened people. And so it was that the same thing with Jesus. He didn't walk his talk or walk his walk without a spiritual gathering of disciples with him that traveled and later would be forth. They'd go, out for, go forth and, and they would continue spreading his words and gaining more and more. How did the churches get started anyhow? And so it is that we have to come back into the sunlight of our humanity, our own humanity, and join with others in relationship of divine intentions for the inclusion and be in sharing the relationship with others, accepting and merging our heart energy, with others in this one heart that beats through all life. The title of our message of this morning, you and I are we. And if we embrace that and take on this attitude of relationship, uh, then that source of divine love is always going to be blossoming. If we follow Jesus' advice, <laughs> what more could we do? Asking us to allow love, to love that source God to be woven into the self-esteem of our godness, of our divinity, we can be able to love all others as we love ourselves. All others as we love ourselves. And when we develop these eyes that can see that the guru as me and as you is God incarnate and relate with one another, excluding no one, no one for being who they are, except maybe for, with a couple exceptions, like perhaps having nothing to do with using our energy to try to support anyone who would intend deliberate harm to others. The same is going with any group. Now, making our intentions real. You know, simply walking our talk by sharing and caring. You know, it's said by very well-intentioned uh, advice by counselors of financial affairs. You've heard this before. The future belongs to those who prepare. And then you've heard this too. I offer this as a companion path of advice that works even better. One that says that we live in the present moment, so the present belongs to those who give the most care. Give the most care. Being open to caring and sharing sets in motion this great law, that great law of attraction. And as we open ourselves to that namaste approach of seeing the godness in all people around us, then we have this common 
uh, thing of we call irritations popping up and the differences that pop up and the barriers that pop up between, that can just diminish and di disappear. That can just float away. And we see more of what unites us in spiritual purpose. We're all here together, not somewhere else for good reasons, darn good reasons. Simple as I can make it is that caring is not worrying about us. Worry carries the doubt into the moments Caring is the sister to compassion. Sometimes we hear someone say, I worry about you. That's a good time to change our thinking, to change life, change the energy of that moment and speak out boldly and say, I care about you. Anytime, anything you wish to share, I care and I will listen. That's a whole different energy connection than bringing worry into the picture. The formula for peace, power, and progress, the three Ps, in our spiritual lives, this formula lives for relationships by applying our morning's topic title to your life. You and I are we. <laughs> you and me makes us. We can choose. We can become us. Now, I'm going to start closing uh, this morning's message. I was going to use my guitar a little bit, and some, but I don't know how comfortable I am up here with guitar knocks around and whatnot, but I want to do introduce you to something that I think really, really touched me when I read it. I want to do a short reading from Gary Zukov's writings. If you're familiar with Gary Zukov, you know who I'm talking about. If not, why? Pick up his book sometime. He's got several, several. But in this book, he, uh, it's not necessarily the same as our new taught teachings from our science of mind perspective, but it's pretty darn close. But because we're open to truth, yeah, yeah, this is a science of, of teaching. We're open at the top, we say. We're open to the truth from all angles and all directions because, you know, we know that God comes out of left field sometimes, right? Mm hmm I think this story can fit right in with our morning. So listen close. And you might hear something that rings a bell within your own sacred belief system about life. See, the, the, the divine works in so, so many wise and wonderful ways. Oh, my God, it, God works, does he ever, does it ever, does God ever, and always shows up on time to give us what we need. So here it is. Now, these words are directly from Gary Zukov's book. With a couple of minds only, I think I hear God calling. That's good. Here's the story. A friend of me told me a story that his minister told him. Two young men who grew up as best friends always had each other's back, made a pact of friendship to be there for one another, and they enlisted in the Marines and were sent to Vietnam. They were caught in a firefight. And one of them was mortally wounded in a clearing. Well, with uh, the North Vietnamese on one side and the clearing and the Marines on the other, the wounded man called out and called out for again and again for his friend. And the sergeant in charge of the Marines at the patrol shouted, don't you dare think about going out there. He's dying. He's not going to live, and you'll die too if you try to help him. But breaking away from the sergeant, the young man ran, crouching into the clearing. Under fire, he dragged his friend back, and by that time, his friend was dead. I told you so, yelled the sergeant. He was dying. The young man looked up from his friend's body into the face of his sergeant, and he said, when I got to him, he was still alive, and he said, I knew you would come. I knew you would come. Now, <clears throat> I don't know if this story actually happened the way I was told, but I want to tell you, from the perspective of the soul, it's true. Now, I want to pause right here and explain that Gary Zukov presents a unique perspective in regards to how spirit and you and I work as one and become we, to work together to make up spiritual purpose for our human here, our human journey on this earth. He thinks, you see, of our human journey as being an earth school. So here's how he put it. He writes, each of us has contracts with the universe. We accept those before we enter into the human journey and earth school, and these are sacred contracts. 
They don't predetermine anything. Nothing can do that, and this, here's why. It's because no one knows what decisions we're going to make as free will beings until we encounter the circumstances that pop up in our lives. But he declares that no one we meet in the earth school is a stranger to the heart or to the soul. We are soul friends, or we would not be together at all. Even individuals whom you or I would, would consider cur our current enemies, and any of those whom you judge harshly are really friends from the perspective of our soul. A great law of attraction draws us to meet, and as certain conditions arise, the you and the I and the other are pulled into divine agreements as we appear individually to keep those agreements with making choices. And then we, as eternal soul beings coming from eternity into form and on into eternity as we leave our earthly form, our soul always sees inward to the real self of oneness with all. Therefore, we can greet each person that shows up in our life, whether ally or foe, as the young Marine greeted his dear friend when he said, I knew you would come. I may not have been expecting it at the moment here on this earth, but we know those will show up in our life that are meant to show up in our life. Let me tell you something. There is no accident that Kathleen sang that song this morning. That was meant to be. Did your hearts open up just a little bit more after hearing that song? Mine did. So, my final words. Yeah, my final words I'm going to do with my guitar. dropping this guitar. Because <laughs> being up here is a little bit different, but here's, here's my final words. I was not created. I have always been. Never was a time when I never was. And there will never come a time when I will never be. You were not created. You have always been Never was a time when you never were Never come a time when you will never be We are spiritual beings Throughout eternity And we always know no matter which way The winds would blow <laughs> I knew you would come Oh, I knew you would come, come to be who you were born to be, to be with me. And so it is. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Don. Now you see why I keep harassing him to sing to us, don't you? Join me in that, please. <laughs> harassing him to sing. <laughs> harassing him. <laughs> Thank she you. Loves so. me and all that. I know she loves me. <laughs> she doesn't tell me that, but I know she loves me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for, yeah. Green spirit through through your voice and consciousness this morning. And so at this time, this holy sacred time that we get to share back with our community, I invite the ushers to come forward. We'll have uh, two people standing right there together. Uh, one looks eager and the other looks like I'm always here. Shannon, mm -hmm. would you and uh, the dog lady please come forward? <laughs> I was going to say Simon, but it's Simon's mama, right? Simon's mama. And Shannon. 
Yeah. <laughs> so as you have you've been here before, know that I consider this a very sacred time because normally you just sit and listen. But this part, we get to participate as one in the sharing of our gifts, uh, our financial gifts, which are part of energy because you know money is only energy. And let us say this uh, affirmation together. And I, you know, we say affirmations so quickly. Sometimes we forget the person, purpose of affirmations. Is their uh, truth statements? And when we listen and take them in, <clears throat> it can really change our own consciousness. So divine love, as me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, and all that I circulate. And you know, go ahead, ladies. Um, think about that. If our beliefs bring into realization the experiences of our lives, and we understand that we, we accept that divine love blesses and multiplies. We get in the consciousness of multiplication. We do. Just as real as a consciousness of subtraction. It it's a choice, as you said, Reverend Don. Thank you. Why is it? I am so blessed. Yeah. Let us do that. Reverend, would you come forward and help us out on this? Let's sing together, I am so blessed. You know the song, right? I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed, I am so blessed, I am so grateful for all that I have. You and I are we. You are and I are we as we create this community, as we create this fundamental approach to life, which includes our gift of ourselves, our gifts of our goods, our gifts of our intentions, our gifts of our prayers. We are so grateful for every gift that we create here today and throughout our lives. And we just express it naturally and we declare together. And so it is. And just to remind everyone that uh, as we come together in community, and you know I think that is the best, uh, what uh, our uh, financial abundance also does is provide an online experience for those who are not in person today. Or the wonderful thing is I'm going um, next week to Idaho, a rural place, and there is no church there. But I will get to be with you and experience that. So thank you for your gifts that allow that to happen, that those of us who may not be in a place where we can come together, that we can still come together. So you are blessing so many, and including me next week. So let us say together our prayer protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Where, wherever we are, God is, and all is well. And let us stand and know that peace is possible as we sing our peace song. Yeah.